Letters to my Palestinian neighbor by Yossi Klein Halevi. The other day, I went to pray at the tomb of the patriarchs and matriarchs in Hebron. Nowhere in this land do I feel more rooted and more disoriented than in this shrine that Muslims call the Ibrahimi Mosque and Jews call the Cave of Machpelah. From the Hebrew word for doubling, because here are buried the founding couples of the Jewish people, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob and Leah. Perhaps Machpelah hints at another coupling of Judaism and Islam, the fates that emerged from Abraham's sons, Isaac and Ishmael. Perhaps in the divine plan, we were meant to be entwined, challenged to grow together. And yet, in this place of our shared origin, where Muslims and Jews should recognize each other as inseparable from this land, and Hebrew and Arabic as the languages of its soul, here is where we have most wounded each other. I began my pilgrimage at an outdoor corner of the massive stone building, whose foundations were laid by the Judean king Herod, over which was built the mosque that stands today. A sign notes that here once stood a staircase where, for centuries, Jews were confined to the seventh step by Muslim authorities, forbidden to enter the building, forbidden to unburden themselves before Father Abraham and Mother Sarah. Instead, Jews would insert notes with prayers through the cracks of the stones. Recent pilgrims have placed notes in those same cracks, linking their prayers with those of our ancestors who once stood at this place that embodied the humiliation of exile. I entered the building, divided now between areas for Muslim prayer and Jewish prayer. Once, not so long ago, it was different. In the decades after the Six-Day War, Muslims and Jews would freely mingle here. Muslim women with kerchiefs tied under their chins and Jewish women with kerchiefs tied behind their necks silently prayed, if not together, then at least side by side. Watching them in those years, I had felt that this place assumed an extra dimension of holiness imparted by the simple act of Muslim and Jewish pilgrims coming together. Yes, it was happening under Israeli army control and tension was always palpable. But for the first time, we all could gather here and I felt the blessing of our commingling prayers. The slender opening that joined our walls shut on February 25, 1994, with the Ramadan massacre committed by Baruch Goldstein, a religious Jew who fired into a crowd of Muslim worshippers in the Hall of Isaac and Rebekah, murdering 29 people and wounding dozens more. Acting in the name of God, he committed the ultimate desecration of this sacred place. I approached the area dedicated to Abraham and Sarah, a small room with high vaulted ceilings that contained stone cenotaphs marking their graves in the cave below. This is part of the Jewish area of the site, and it is separated by a padlocked iron door from the Muslim area, where cenotaphs mark the graves below of Rebecca and Isaac, as if either Jews or Muslims could possibly be strangers anywhere in this building. I sat on the bench against the iron door. This is where the terrorist stood, calmly loading and reloading his automatic weapon as he fired into crowds of men and women, bent in prayer. How could you? I asked him. How dare you desecrate the name of God into your people? The Muezzin's call to prayer filled the building. The voice was so strong it seemed to be coming from the walls. I noticed some Jews turning visibly anxious. But one young man in a black hat and side locks, a visitor from New York said to me, you know, when you think about what they're saying, Allahu Akbar, God is great. It's a good thing, no? Yes, so obvious. And yet in Hebron, 
Muslims and Jews can never take each other's goodwill for granted. I wanted to hug him.